This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org. I'm Amy Goodman. Former Honduran president Juan Orlando Hernandez was found guilty Friday of cocaine trafficking following a two-week trial here in New York. Prosecutors accused him of ruling Honduras as a narco state, accepting millions of dollars in bribes from cocaine traffickers in exchange for protection, including deploying the Honduran National Police to safeguard cocaine loads as they were transported through Honduras. Ahead of the trial in February, the former head of Honduras's National Police, Juan Carlos El Tigre Bonilla, pleaded guilty to cocaine trafficking charges. Celebrations erupted after Friday's verdict. This is Honduran activists speaking outside Manhattan's federal courthouse. We are satisfied because justice has been done. Honduras is a country thirsty for justice, where impunity has prevailed. And unfortunately, we Hondurans have to come to foreign countries to ask for justice, because it does not exist there since the bodies for justice, the public ministry, prosecutor's office, judicial power, continue to collude with organized crime. The rotten political the political class we have has brought the country to total collapse, and everyone we see here, this entire community thirsting for justice, is a clear example of a society in total collapse that has been trampled on and sunk by corrupt politicians. During the trial, several convicted drug traffickers testified against Hernandez, including some affiliated with the Sinaloa cartel and the son of another former U.S.-backed Honduran president, Porfirio Pepe Lobo Sosa. One confidential witness alleged officials with the Israeli embassy in Colombia were involved in the drug scheme and helped launder millions of dollars that were transferred from Honduras. Hernandez served as president of Honduras from 2014 to 2022. He was a longtime U.S. ally, despite mounting reports of human rights violations and accusations of corruption involvement with drug smuggling. He was arrested less than a month after his presidential term ended and was extradited to the United States. His brother, Tony Hernandez, is already serving a life sentence in the U.S. for drug smuggling. Juan Orlando Hernandez faces life in prison now that he's convicted. For more, we're joined joined by two guests. In Honduras's capital, Tegucigalpa, we're joined by Camilo Bermudez, a member of the Civic Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras, the organization founded by Berta Cáceres, the Lenca indigenous environmental defender who was assassinated in 2016, while Hernández was president. And we're joined by Dana Frank, professor of history emerita at the University of California, Santa Cruz, author of The Long Honduran Night, Resistance Terror in the United States in the Aftermath of the Coup. She attended Juan Orlando Hernandez's trial here in New York. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Um, uh, professor Frank, you were here in New York when we last spoke to you. You were going each day to the trial. Talk about the significance of this conviction and the testimony that was provided to convict him. Well, you know, it's an incredible vindication of what Hondurans and so many of us have known since Juan Orlando was first elected and, in fact, since the 2009 military coup overthrowing President Zelaya that the U.S. backed. I mean, the evidence was chilling, and it was very hard for all of us to sit there uh, every day and listen to this litany of assassinations of prosecutors, assassinations of journalists, um, uh, corruption of the police, the military, politicians, the president, his brother, you name it. And it was like the curtain was drawn back and you could see the day-to-day -day workings of this tremendous, violent, corrupt mechanism that was the Juan Orlando Hernandez administration, but also that of Pape Lobo, as you said, before him. And all of this was the, what happened after the 2009 coup that opened the door for the destruction of the rule of law in, in Honduras. So it was, you know, very um, sobering to listen to. And, you know, we were just terrified with which way with the jury was going to go. And so it's a great thing with very complicated caveats about the U.S. role in all this. It's a great thing that he was convicted legitimating what Hondurans know. But we can talk about what it means that it was the U.S. that did it. Well, let's talk about what it means that the U.S. would did it. I mean, democracy now, we went on the plane from Nicaragua to Honduras with the Zelayas, with, Manuel, with Mela Zelaya, who was the president, who was deposed in a coup, and his wife, Xiomara, who's currently the president of Honduras, when they returned to Honduras. 
Um, you know, the United States, that this all flows back to the 2009 too, which the U.S. supported the stabilization of it. It supported a completely bogus election um, at, at, a few months after that. And the, it, it supported the Juan Orlando when he, um, well, first of all, it didn't say a beep when, as president of Congress, he overthrew the Supreme Court in 2012. It, the U.S. legitimated his uh, siege, it, the fraudulent 2013 election. You can see step by step by step how the U.S. continued to to continue to endorse this illegal regime, most obviously in 2017 when he was supposedly reelected, it was very clear that he stole the election. And and um, international observers were saying, you need another election, you need to redo this, and the U.S. legitimated him. So the U.S. kept Juan Orlando in power for all those eight years, but it also legitimated and celebrated him. It sent hundreds of millions of dollars in military and security aid. You know, and I want to underscore it, that was the Obama administration, it was Biden celebrating him when he was vice president, it was Trump, and it was Biden again as president. And um, so it's a long and devastating story of what happened to the Honduran people. You know, and I, I want to underscore that Juan Orlando was not just a drug trafficker and moving arms. I mean, he was he was a criminal on a vast scale. As I said, not only did he support the coup and the overthrow of the Supreme Court, he ran for re-election completely illegally and violated the violation of the Constitution. He and his party stole at least $300 million from the National Health Service for his 2013 election, bankrupting it and leading to the deaths of ten thousands, tens of thousands of people. I mean, many of the crimes of are many are the crimes of Juan Orlando Hernandez, not just those narrowly defined by the Southern District of New York as having imported cocaine and arms into the United States. Camila Bermudez, you're on the ground in Tegucigalpa, the capital of Honduras right now, member of the Civic Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras, founded by the assassinated environmental indigenous leader Berta Cáceres, assassinated during the tenure of President Orlando Hernández. Can you talk about the response on the ground when people heard the verdict on Friday? Hi, Amy. Thank you for the invitation, of course. Well, the reaction in Honduras to the verdict against Juan Orlando is, is multiple. Honduran people are still trying to process this news and all the information that the trial has brought to light. The majority feeling is satisfaction, a feeling of progress in achieving justice for a people that has suffered much from the state violence and very high rates of poverty and precariousness by, led by the Ho the Ho. Juan Orlando Hernandez government and the National Party. Of course, many are worried about what it had happened, uh, why it had happened in the U.S. and not in Honduras, and why this uh, says about the Honduran justice system and what is going to happen next. Uh, of course, some sectors are trying to minimize this verdict, uh, others such as popular evangelical pastors and the traditional media. And of course, uh, Juan Orlando's close circle are trying to create doubt and criticism about the conviction and evidence against Ho. But organizations as Copin, uh, who we denounced many, for many years all the criminal action of Juan Orlando, uh, we are convicted uh, or convinced about these convictions and his guilt. Uh, and, well, many of us uh, are raising questions about why the U.S. government, knowing this information from at least 2015, continued to support Juan Orlando's authoritarian regime, even when he ran for an unconstitutional re-election in 2017. What's so interesting is this is an election year in the United States. Immigration is um, one of the major issues, if not the primary issue. Um, many Hondurans have tried to flee to the United States, um, fleeing what had become in Honduras a narco state uh, with the help of the United States. Um, Camilo Bermudez, do people make that connection in Honduras? And how do they feel about the draconian immigrant response, the crackdown on people trying to cross the border, given what the U.S. has done in creating that situation? Well, I think that people do do uh, the connections about how this uh, state of Honduras has become a narco state or a state uh, like run by criminals. Uh, but it's not 
that easy to make the connection about the U.S. Like now the U.S. Uh, has, or the U.S. government has come as a, an heroic act of uh, going after Juan Orlando. And it's difficult to, to, to read uh, how this uh, impacts on, on, on the public. Uh, we remember, several organizations remember that during ho the, the, the Juan Orlando regime, multiple social leaders were assassinated, uh, multiple cases, vast cases of corruption, vast cases of dispossession for indigenous lands. Uh, and, well, it's of course known that the condemnation of Juan Orlando as head of an organized crime and drug trafficking structure is a step forward. However, we cannot have done this without the support, or he could not have done this without the support of the private companies and financial institutions. And many people are wondering, what are the investigations uh, uh, against that? What are the processes against that? What are the processes behind all the violence that has uh, come to a result of people leaving uh, Honduras? And finally, uh, Professor Frank, what happens next? When is the sentencing? And, I mean, we just finished a whole segment on Haiti um, that is in total turmoil with not the same details, but similar U.S. shoring up of coup regimes. And well, you know, exactly. I was thinking about the previous speaker and the phrase U.S. imperial machinations. This has been going on, well, of course, through all of 20th century Honduran history. Um, uh, but, you know, I, what happens next is, you know, he can appeal. Nobody thinks he's going to win on appeal. Uh, his sentencing hearing is June 26th in New York. Um, it, it, the minimum sentence is 40 years, and he can get a three life sentences. So he's 55 years old. He's going to be in jail for till he's 95 at the very least. Um, and, you know, I guess you want, I just, you know, in terms of what happens next, it's not the United States or the Biden administration that 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 was wanting to get rid of Juan Orlando. It was the Southern District of New York that followed the money, followed the drugs and did this. And Biden administration and Trump administration kicking and, and Obama administration kicking and screaming all the way. So, you know, right now, Shamara Castro, the president of Honduras, uh, the center left president who was elected by the biggest landslide in Honduran history, a little over two years ago. She faces tremendously devastated government and economy. You know, it's they're making progress there, and it's incredible challenges that sh she and her government are facing, and they don't control the Congress. What is the United States going to do? They haven't said a peep. The State Department has not said a peep. And the ambassador, Dogu, who just loves to tweet out attacking the Honduran government, all she did was repeat what the Southern District of New York had said. You know, the pattern in the last two years since Shamara came into office is this that the U.S. has been repeatedly trying to undermine her and to undermine um, her the reforms that she's put through or tried to put through uh, of the tax system, of the electrical system, trying to push back the corruption of all the post-coup years. And it's shameless the way the United States is continuing to work with the National Party, which is so established to be full of drug traffickers and criminals. The president of the current president of the National Party, which is— Ten is seconds. A of justice. Um, you know, and and so the U.S. has been supporting the National Party in every way it can and acting like it's an equal actor with Libre. So is the U.S. going to apologize? Is it going to pay reparations? Is it going to change its way? Is it going to acknowledge what it did? And we have to hold the United States government accountable, as the U.S. Congress has repeatedly tried to do. Dana Frank, I want to thank you for being with us, Professor of History Emerita, University of California, Santa Cruz, and Camilo Bermudez, uh, Civic Council of Popular and Indigenous Organizations of Honduras, founded uh, by um, <clears throat> the assassinated leader Berta Cáceres, the organization called Coping.